Hey guys, welcome back. Check out this video by Pace Melby. Never have any money. So when money comes in for my stuff, I immediately deploy my money into buying a business or buying real estate and I never have any actual money. Why? Because if my bank account's zero, I'm always working. But when I have 300,000 or a million or $2 million sitting in my bank account, guess what happens immediately? It's like not even conscious, it's subconscious. You just, all of a sudden, you're just chilling. I'm starting off, when I, when I saw this video, it was like he was just standing at my front door, just looking at my first two years when I came back to Florida. I was, when I say comfortable, I had roughly about 500000 just sitting in the bank. Just, just sitting there. And I was like, oh, I'm good. I ain't doing nothing. And it gave me the ability just to, ah, I was lazy. I was too young to be that lazy. But I was like, oh, I'm good. And then, and then, so I started putting money to work, started putting money to work. And then I just left a hundred thousand dollars in there, but just looking at the hundred thousand dollars, I was like, oh, well, yeah, no, I ain't, I ain't in a rush to do nothing. I ain't in a rush to do nothing. And then I got into the real estate game and then I just kept going. Then I just kept shooting to go broke. Well, no, then I just, you know. I put all the cash out there because I was buying the rental properties cash and then I didn't have nothing in there. Then I was like, oh, I got to start grinding. I mean, of course, I'm getting cash flow from rental properties, but I'm like, all right, I got to start grinding, start working, start grinding, start working, start grinding, start working. And then I would get cash, get cash, get cash. And then now I deploy it out. I deploy it out to keep that grind going, keep that motor going because I didn't been there where I just had cash sitting there. And then I just be like, oh, well, I ain't got to do nothing today. It's, I got cash. I'm good. But that right there is it feel like he was just saying the words back to me. Now today I focus on having as soon as I see a pile of cash, I'm like, uh, okay, let's get rid of it. To keep the grind going. I mean, I I got family members, I got people that say they my friends or whatever saying, Man, you work too hard, man. You gotta you gotta relax. I'm like, no, I'm broke. I'm broke. Of course they don't understand it, but I'm like, I go broke to keep the grind going, keep the fuel going. It just, it stops me from being lazy. It keeps my mind exercised and I, I keep going. Like, I know most people would be sitting there looking like, you just send all the money out there and then you put your bank accounts back at zero? Yes. It keeps me motivated. I mean, do I have avenues and ways to bring in income to pay for stuff? Yes. But every time that I can wake up and see that bank account, those bank accounts close to zero will give me the grind to, fill the bank accounts back up again. And I just do it over and over and over again. Every time I have piles of cash, I'm looking for a business to buy. I'm looking for another property to buy. And then the money leaves. And then I just keep grinding, keep grinding, keep grinding, improving uh, improving processes in my life, in the businesses, in the real estate. And then I get the cash back and then I send it out there again. It's being uncomfortable is what make the rich get richer. Being uncomfortable make the people that's poor. That will make you get richer. Like we always talk about investing is you invest till it hurts. You don't just invest and be like, oh, I got $50 laying to the side. You invest till it hurts. And then you fix your life to make the rest of the money in your paycheck work. But Alex, I don't want to stay on my soapbox because I got a lot on this subject. Yeah, I've experienced this in the sense of not being comfortable. Unfortunately, the opposite of being <laughs> uncomfortable being broke, because every time I have enough money to purchase a property, I'm looking for a property and I'm actively trying to purchase that property. And then I go straight broke. And and then Kirby tries to invite me out to eat. And I'm like, no, man, I ain't got nothing. <laughs> but I'm always he's looking like, for wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out. <laughs> nah. He's lying, y'all. He's lying. He goes out, but this is what he do. He be hanging out at the kids menu. He be saying, hey, can I take this side off so I can not pay for it so I can get it under $12? That's what he really do. Well, go ahead. <laughs> so, I mean, every, I did, and honestly, I did this last year and I'm doing this right now. It's just every time I get a property it's back to grind grind work work saving that money up until i have enough for the next one considering what i'm going to need for all the costs it's not just the down payment it's if there's going to be any closing costs included if there's going to be repairs all that i have to have that within my budget 
and I use it all for the property. I use it all and we go very close to zero and then it's right back to working. And the idea is not because people might listen to this and say, well, then what's the point of, you know, investing in real estate? You have to understand you're basically just transferring your cash into a asset. You still have the money. It's just locked into an asset. But what you're building is not your cash amount in a bank, but it's, you're building your cash flow. And so that's my constant goal is I'm looking every time I like basically I document it. I'm like, OK, right now my cash flow is X. Once I get the next property, it could be this amount now. Then I get the next one, it could be this amount. And I just want to keep growing that over and over and grow that cash flow amount to get to the point, like you said, where you're at now, where you have an excess amount of funds coming in per month because you've built that portfolio up. But it takes the capital to be deployed in order to grow that cash flow. And then once that cash flow in or that cash flow comes in, Basically, I'm sure that's a sense of comfort because now it's like, oh, I don't care if I don't have the cash right now because I'm about to get all this drip coming in soon and I can just work with that again. Yeah, and, and that's that's what it is. People think like once you're you start building that portfolio, like so starting at property one, that's going to be the longest amount of time you got to build that capital to get a property. So you get that first property. Let's say you you came up with the first down payment from a W-2 job. So you working your W-2 job, saving all your nickels and dimes and pennies to come up with that down payment for the first property. So let's say it took you two years. And then you buy that rental property. Now that cash flow plus you working is going to take you maybe 18 months for to buy the second property. Now you got cash flow coming from two properties and working. So now it's going to probably take you 12 to 15 months. Then it's going to take you, then you get another property. Then it's going after like your fourth or fifth property. Now it's going from 12 months to six months to keep coming up with those down payments to do it because all that cash flow is coming back in to build up the bank account faster. And the next thing you know, after you, you know, you get a, num a couple numbers of them, you know, I'm not going to say what number it is, but it can be literally cash flow coming in every month that if you wanted to, you could just go buy another property. Or you could sit there and pile it up for six months and go buy a bigger project, go buy a business, go do something else like that. But it the more the more assets you have that produce cash flow, the faster it is to return the capital to deploy the money again. So I just want people to understand that because people are probably thinking like, it took me five years to save up money. I got to wait another five years to buy a property. No, if you don't spend the cash flow and you still save what you were saving, the money you can buy and will grow faster. It's the same thing when buying dividend stocks. If you reinvest the dividend to buy more shares, the dividend payment will be higher every time. So, and then you just keep plowing away, investing, 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 investing. Then the drip comes. Like I always bring up Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett bought shares of Coca-Cola in the 80s. Now the CEO of Coca-Cola makes 25 to $40 million a year in income, but Warren Buffett makes a half a billion dollars a year just on dividend payments. And reinvesting the dividends to make to get more shares because the dividend payment is higher every time. Now they take the money out because it's a half billion dollars a year just in dividend income, just from investments they did early on. And that's the same thing with rental properties. That's the same thing with buying cash flow assets and cash flow businesses. You just gotta have that mindset to do it. And then when you decide to stop doing it, then you just live off the cash flow of everybody else working, and you can do your own thing. Well, that means said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. Let us know what you think about it in the comment section down below. Share this video, subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one.